This is what you don't see yeah, on TV, exactly. right, Elvis? Forget about me. Okay. Good to go? All right, Keisha, let's just, for the record here, get the correct spelling of your first and last name. Uh, K-E-I-S-H-A, <coughs> green with the E, G-R-E-E-N-E. -E. Okay, and you're Paul Witherspoon's mother. Yes. So you were probably one of the first people to get the calls that night. Uh, yeah. What was what was that call like? What was that moment like? Uh, tell you the truth, the, 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 the call I got, he was he was shot. He was shot 12 times. She was shot 12 times. Like the That's bullets, what you believed in that moment? At that moment. I didn't know really for sure that whether he was okay or not until I actually got to talk to uh, the guy whose house he was at. I called him, like, what happened? What's, what the hell is going on? And he was like, no, you know, he's not shot. He, no, he's in a, you know, he was arrested or whatever. And I really still wasn't sure if he even really was sure because he was in the house the whole time. So it was just a, it was, it was a array of things. I really wasn't sure until I actually called the police department and they said that they did have him there. I mean, based on what we see on a regular basis, police, police involved shootings, mm -hmm. it's reasonable to think that yeah. he could have been shot. Yeah, definitely. And, and like I said, when, when I got the call, it was like a number of calls, like friends, uh, ex-girlfriends, friends, I mean, people was, all his friends from the community was calling me. Like, Ma, you know, we hear Porsche. I mean, these, because, you know, I live in Hamden. So, the, you know, the news, I'm asleep. It's four something in the morning, five something in the morning. I'm, I'm knocked out. I got his daughter at the house. I'm asleep, you know? I'm getting banging on the door. I mean, they was literally coming to my house, banging on the door, like, Ma, get up, you know? Shady shot, they call him Shady, Shady shot, you know? Like, people thought he was dead. Like, they was putting rest in peace Shady on Facebook, you know? So, I didn't know what was going on. You're now the mother of someone who has been involved in one of these in right. these shootings. We mm -hmm. see them all over the country, right? Mm -hmm. You're now the mother of someone who's been involved in one. What what is this like now? I, I, I it's like you know it's like it's like watching your child being someone other than who they were. It changes the way. Cha I mean, the the person you see if you saw the video with him singing with the girl, that's him. I can show you videos of him dancing with his aunts at family functions, dancing with his cousins. He was just a outgoing kid. I mean, you know. Now he's just... He's changed. Yeah, I, I, just, I mean, just trying to work with him. Because I, I, can't, I can't say that I understand. You know, I can't say that I know what you're going through. As a parent, you know, when you're there with your kid and you find yourself helpless. And you, you, you can't do anything to, to fix him. You know? You, and and at, at 21, you know, you can't coddle him. You can't hold him. You know, so it's just like, you know, just watching your kid be someone that's that, that, uh, of their former self. So, you know, it's just... Uh, when you see these people on social media and they have so much to say and they don't live here, they don't know him, they don't know the situation, and you know, the first thing they see a black guy, why did he get out the car, this, that, and the third, you know, read the reports, watch the cameras. Uh, the cops are giving you the information. You know, you're so quick to post everything on social media. Read the stuff first. Because when you do, then you'll be able to see, because that's someone's child, that's someone's brother, that's someone's father, you know, that's someone's nephew, you know, and you know, that's my baby. That's that's my youngest son. And to say that, you know, he didn't grow up, you know, having to duck, dodge and duck bullets, you know. So, you know, to see him now, I mean, to be afraid to, when he sees sirens, to cringe, you know, it's it hurts me. That's my son, and I, I can't do nothing to help him. You You've know? seen the video. You've seen all the bullets that were flying. I mean, it, it's amazing that... I tell you, he had a, he had a grandmother that was most God-fearing person you'll ever meet. And I believe that she was with him that night. You know, I believe that there was nothing short of God's grace and mercy that saved his life, that saved both their lives. Um, we could never say, for me, I could never say why he wasn't hit. I could never say why she was hit and not him. I just say, I thank God that they're both still here, that they're both still alive. And I say that to my son, you have a second chance at life. You could have, I could have been burying you today. This could have been a whole other conversation that I'm having with you. And I want him to see that you're here for a reason. Your life was spared for a reason. And I want him to know that he could be the catalyst for change. You know, he could be that person that speak up, that young man, to show other young men under him, you know, something different. I mean, I don't know. But I hope that with all the tragedy and everything that's going on, that he sees that his life is, is definitely worth living at this point because now he's just like I say he's just all over the place not anybody that you know is in a positive sight and energy to just continue to pray for him pray for the both of them you know because imagine all those bullets going through that car and you doing nothing wrong you're putting your hands out you see it in the video he has his hands out he's you know he's opening the door he's coming out you're asking me to get out I'm getting out and then you just start shooting at me I mean I can't even imagine you know you see I, all I can see his legs kicking in the car like he just is it difficult as a mom to watch yeah. that video? I could do. I, I, I'm taking everything I'm on this camera from not crying, because I, 
even the other videos of just before these, just the videos of this, just the shooting, the reckless, you're running and you're just running this way and you're shooting this way. Thank God that they, you know, no other houses or homes or other people were in, were hit by those, those bullets. He shot his own, the, the other cop. Thank God it was, you know, it wasn't some, something more major. There's homes, it's a residential area. Say if one of those bullets would have hit someone in their home, how would they have explained that? You know, it's just, these cops need to realize that I understand that you have a job to do and you want to go home to your family, but the people that you're pulling over, we want to go home to ours too. We want our kids to come home too. And we understand that, you know, there's bad things out here in the world, there's bad people out here in the world. We understand that. But you have to understand there's good people too. And we, I don't know the situation with the 911 call. I don't know any of that. But what I do know is that if he's getting out and he's complying, you, his hands are out. You see both hands. How would he have had a pistol? You see his hands, even if there was one in the car, let's say. You, his hands were still out. He was complying with whatever you asked him to do. So now that we're complying, you still shoot us? I think these cops need to live here. They, if you're a cop and you are in New Haven, police officer, you should not live in Meriden. You shouldn't be able to live in Greenwich, Glastonbury, wherever it is. You should have to live in New Haven for, for some time. I'm not saying you have to live here forever, Just but at least six, six months to a year, because that way your kids are going to play with my kids. You're going to, when you go out for your coffee in the morning, you see me going to work, I see you going to work. You know, when we go into the grocery stores, we see each other. So you get to know the community that you're policing. How are you, you know, policing a community that you don't know, your residents? You don't know the people that you're, you're servicing. It just doesn't make sense. Sensitivity training, okay, but if your sensitivity training does not include a get to know the community event, then it, it's pointless. It's just a waste of money, you know? So I feel like, you know, somewhere, you know, and that's my request, I think, to, to, to the mayor of Hamden or whomever I'm going to be able to speak to at some point in time, that it definitely be something that maybe they could implement. Where For six months to a year, bring your family here. Live in this community. When I go to the store around my house, they be like, hey, Ms. Green, or hey, Keish. When my sons go in there, they, hey, Shady, they know us. They're a part of the community. Because they're there every day. They see us. They're a part of our lives every day. Yeah. So, again, imagine if the cops did that. Imagine if your kids had to play with my kids. You know, if your kids went to the same school my kids went to, you would, oh, it, you would get to, oh, oh, dad, that's, that's Paul. Oh, dad, that's Stephanie. That's, she goes to my school. Or she works with me at Dunkin' Donuts or whatever. You know, at some point in time, your lives are crossed with the people that you're policing. Right. You know, so I just think that I, this world is just all messed up right now. And I think we all just need to take a breath and a breather before you pull the bullet, under, the trigger. Understand, that's somebody's child. If that was yours, how many white children have you heard being shot up by black officers? That's the question I want to ask you guys. How many white children, white adults, white anybody, has been shot up by black police officers in the United States? That's the question that we should ask ourselves. So I say to them, you know, my son, they broke him. They broke him. And now it's my job to fix him, you know? And he has a long road ahead of him. So I think that, you know, those officers should really look within themselves and see that, you know, they broke a good young man in my son, you know? And I, I just hope that we could get him back to some type of normalcy. Understood. Yeah. Just hope so. The investigation yeah. finds that the officer's conduct was uh, against policy. What would you like to see happen? Yeah. I mean, I would like to see those officers, uh, we'll yeah. of, 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 of course. Uh, if you don't mind, yeah, I'll ask you. I mean, you know, if ultimately the investigation turns out that the officers were in the wrong mm -hmm. here. Of course, I, I would definitely it? want to see them fired. But I, I also would, wouldn't ever want them to be police officers anywhere else. I wouldn't, be able to, I wouldn't want them to be able to go and apply somewhere else and police someone else's community and potentially do this to someone else's child. I don't know if that's something that, that can be done, but I think that, for them to go and be a police officer anywhere else would be an injustice to that town as well. I think they're a liability. I mean, I, that's how I feel. Okay, understood. Or one strike and one watch out, are you good? What do you need? I got a quick drive. Okay, I'm gonna break. Um, what, I mean, have, have officials, the mayor, police chief, commissioner, any I've of those heard, people reached out to you? I've heard from no, um, I've no, heard from no mayor, no police commissioner. I've heard from no one. Oh, he talked to Paul. Yeah. He okay. talked to Paul. Yeah, I haven't spoke to him yet, but I'm supposed to be meeting with him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
but I personally haven't heard, but he has reached out to okay. my son, okay. so I'm supposed to meet with him. But I do want to say, if I'm still on camera, yeah, yeah, I want to thank the ladies from Black <clears throat> Lives Matter of New Haven. Mm -hmm. They've been doing so much to, to put this out here for my son and for Stephanie and for, for Paul's family. I do want to say to those ladies that I appreciate them. And somebody could reach out to me so I could talk to them verbally because I appreciate all the things that they've been doing the protests, out here, the protests, the, the marches, everything. I, I have not personally been able to talk to any of them so if any of them could reach out to me via Facebook or whatever um, I, I would like to talk to them and just to thank them personally because to see people out there I mean hundreds of people with signs you know justice for Paul like that means a lot right. and that I mean you rally communities together people that we don't even know people don't know us people we don't know them but they were out there in solidarity for my son so I would like to say to everybody who was out there that day thank you my family and I, we appreciate the love and support and just continue to pray for both of these kids that they make it out and make it okay. I imagine it helps the healing process. Yes, it does. It, it, and it, I think it shows him too, you know, that, you know, his life matters. I, it, it's hard, it's hard. I can't even tell you as a young black man how he feels, but he's just, they broke him. Right. You know, now I have to I have to work with him to, to, to fix him, so, you know. Well, I imagine if anybody can do it, you can do it. I appreciate you yeah. interviewing yeah. me, thank, thank you. you.